History has its own very well-known topics. For example, everybody knows the Holocaust, everybody knows the Civil War, and everybody knows the Great Depression. But there is other topics that totally get ignored. For example, the history of platypuses. Welcome to the realm of platypuses, which is actually the correct plural form of platypus. Don't ever say that. And you may not realize it, but platypuses are actually insanely interesting. It is the only one of five mammals that lay eggs. Here's a picture of what they look like. And these cuties live in the rivers of Australia. And they typically live up to around 12 years old. And the platypus's scientific name is... Uh, and the platypus weighs in at about three pounds and is about 20 inches long. So not super huge. Fun fact, a group of platypuses is actually called a paddle. Don't ask me how they got that. And they love their freshwater food, like freshwater shrimps, insect larvae, and crawfish, which makes them a carnivore. And their enemies are snakes, water rats, lizards, foxes, cats, dogs, owls, and finally crocodiles. And another cool fact about them, platypuses do not have stomachs. So any of their food that they eat actually goes straight into their intestines and they use their duck-like bill in order to push out any dirt or nasty bits out before they swallow it. And they were first discovered in 1798. And sadly, because they're borderline extinct, you cannot own them as pets. I mean, who wouldn't want this cutie? Look at it! And sadly, they're blind as a mouse, so they wouldn't be able to see how much you really love them. Aww. But that prompts the question, how do they even navigate this world? Well, that's where their sixth sense comes in. And they have the ability to detect any enemies or potential food by using water waves. This is called electroreception. And this is what allows them to hunt efficiently. And how does this cutie attack others? Well, it actually has venomous spurs on its foot and then uses it as a defense mechanism. So they're able to protect and nourish themselves. Got it. But how do they nourish their young? Surprisingly, they do not have nipples. And a man named George Bennett in 1833 discovered that platypuses actually secrete a milk from its pores and then it drips down into a little milk dish bowl thing. And George happened to go to Australia and discovered this mystery. And the platypus has its fair share of time in history. And so does a ton of other animals. In fact, ancient civilizations have made sure to get some use out of these different animals. Ancient Mesotopia is known for being the cradle of civilization, which means basically they were the first to domesticate animals. In ancient Egypt, dogs were used for hunting buddies or just a normal household pet or to protect you and your environment. Whether that be the drunk guy from the bar, or a random neighbor's car that drives by your home and leaves them to bark an absurd amount of times. But I digress. Cats were just as useful. They were mainly used to get rid of rats or snakes in your house. But they really, I mean heavily, have been depicted through various different forms of art, such as paintings, uh, statues, figurines, uh, amulets, earrings, appendants, so on and so forth. And cats are not the only animals that get represented in this way. The Chinese zodiac, for instance, or the Western zodiac. Most of us know what zodiac signs are. This is essentially where a person's personality is being represented through animals. And the Chinese zodiac has a ton of them, ranging from the tiger, the dog, dragon, rat, ox, snake, goat, rabbit, pig, rooster, horse, and finally the monkey. Now, the Western Zodiac typically doesn't have a lot of these different animals, but it does have some that represent it, such as Aries, the ram, Taurus, the bull, Cancer, the crab, Leo, the lion, Scorpio, the scorpion, Capricorn, the sea goat, and finally Pisces being the fish. The rest of them have non-animal representations. But besides the fun conversations about Zodiac signs you hate and love, Animals have been represented as pieces of history and even represented pride. For example, the bald eagle representing the U.S. The founding fathers decided that it would be the emblem of the nation because it typically symbolizes their fierce, proud, independent, strength, 
and free energy that the nation has adopted over the years. And the importance of the bald eagle is so strong that they even made it a law to imprison anybody who owns, kills, or sells them for profit. Because just like the platypus, they're borderline extinct. We have to keep them alive. What would America be without bald eagles? And animals are even represented in the stock market, such as the bear and bull. It represents the success state of the market. The bull represents progression because it charges, and the bear represents no progression because it hibernates. It's at a standstill. It's dormant. I hope that kind of makes sense. Another example, even politics. The donkey and elephant. The elephant representing the Republican Party, and the donkey representing the Democratic Party. But how does the platypus fit in all of this history mess? Well, the naturalist and father of evolution being Charles Darwin seemed intrigued by the little munchkins because they opened up a whole world of discovery and curiosity for many of the naturalists. This is the guy that has told us that all species and organisms arise and develop the natural selection of small inherited variations that increase the individual's ability to compete, survive, and repopulate. And the platypus, perfect example of convergent evolution. I mean, it's as if the nature gods hit the shuffle button when making this creature. Why exactly are they called the most evolutionary distinct animals? Because every single part of their body has been taken from other animals. It has a duck's bill, webbed feet like a penguin, fur like an otter, a beaver's tail, a shark's sixth sense, limbs on the side like a lizard, eggs that look like a reptile's, and venom like a viper snake. And to be honest, the only reason why they were able to evolve so fast was because they only live in the rivers of Australia. So this made it very easy for them to do so. Typically, they use their long beaver tails to protect them or their eggs or just to hold a various number of items. And all this is important because animals have been represented for years on end and, and you never question their importance with humans because they're so frequently utilized. Animals represent the Chinese and Western Zodiac, provided uses for humans and protection, alluded to a person's wealth based on the number of animals they had, representation for nations, the stock market, political fiascos, and the platypuses are so efficient because they have what the original species lacked and it's now the solution to the original platypus's issues because Papa Darwin said so. All of my sources and citations are in the description below because copyright exists. And I really hope you learned something from this presentation. Now my last and final question. Where did the platypus get its hat from?